The next thing we're going to discuss in our overall theme of cell structure is the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system is pretty expansive, so we're going to have about three to four videos that cover the system in its entirety so that we have a much better understanding of each specific component. In this first video, we're going to label our flowchart endomembrane system 1. Endomembrane system 1. From this point forward, I'll just abbreviate this as EMS, just to make it a little bit easier. But this name actually just means internal, endo means internal, membrane system 1. What do you think it means by internal? The internal of the cell in question. We're talking about cell structure, so we're focusing on the internal membranes that we see. Speaking of membranes, let's explain what a membrane is. We've mentioned it a couple of times so far in our videos on cell structure. Let's actually put a definition to this name. A membrane in cell structure terminology is simply going to be considered a lipid bilayer. We've heard of this term before when we talked about our biological molecules. A membrane that is a lipid bilayer is simply a double fat layer that separates the external environment from the internal. So sep double fat layer. And its whole goal is to form a closed spherical uh, compartment. Forms closed, relatively spherical compartments. And this is seen throughout the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system has many membranes within it that forms many of these closed spherical compartments. What we can say about this is that the cell becomes compartmentalized. And this goes into our next point of the system itself, just to describe it in a little bit more detail. The system, and of course we're referring to the endomembrane system, its whole goal and its whole sort of purpose is this. It compartmentalizes, and that's a good word to know, it co compartmentalizes the cell into organelles. Into organelles. We've all heard of organelles before, but we haven't heard of it in this terminology before. The fact that each organelle, imagine it as simply as a compartment a compartment that's independent and individual to itself because it has what surrounding it? A membrane. And that is the theme of the endomembrane system. The system is all about compartmentalizing the structure of the cell. This system includes many common organelles that you've probably heard of before, but now we can label them underneath a certain system. This includes the plasma membrane. That's a part of the endomembrane system. It also includes the nuclear envelope envelope itself is interconnected to the system, and thus it's part of it. The ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, which we talked about in our previous video. The Golgi apparatus, or just the Golgi. It also includes lysosomes and also includes vacuoles. Each of these we'll talk about in our future videos on cell structure, but these are just the basic components of the system. Once again, the goal of it is to compartmentalize, but then a sub-goal or a side goal of this system would be this. So we have another goal because of this compartmentalization and the structure is going to denote the function. This function will be intracellular, that means within the cell, intracellular communication. And some may even say intercellular as well. Um, in terms of the membrane system focusing and sort of discussing information with other cells near it. But for the purposes of this lecture, we're just going to focus on intracellular or within cell communication. This communication within the cell is aided by the fact that this endomembrane system promotes direct physical continuity. What does that mean? This basically means that each of these membranes are all interconnected so that we have intracellular communication and this interconnected system allows for the transfer of membrane segments. This is another way we can intracellularly communicate, transfer membrane segments. So this is an interesting idea 
And what it really entails is this idea of budding. Specifically, vesicle budding is what is going to allow this overall intracellular communication underneath and utilizing the structure of the compartmentalized endomembrane system. So vesicle budding is one other step that's part of this overall goal of communication. Vesicle budding is what allows the transport of materials. Very simply put, it transports materials. To sort of draw this in a very simple manner, um, what I'm going to do is give you an idea of what a vesicle would look like, what this budding looks like. So imagine we have a system that's enclosed in a membrane. So this is a basic organelle, let's say. And what's going to start happening within this organelle is vesicle budding. Something is going to start budding off of this sort of organelle. And this budding that's occurring is right here. It's going to eventually lead to intracellular communication. Eventually, that budding will actually complete itself and we'll have two independent things. We'll have a vesicle, this is our vesicle, and that original organelle. That vesicle now has a job to go to a separate organelle, and let's draw this organelle as a square just to denote the separation, and join it. And it's joining it because this is the way to communicate. Imagine this is a message that this organelle wants to tell to this separate organelle. It's going to create a vesicle. That vesicle is going to bud off in this situation right here. And once it buds off, it's going to send that message and attach itself to a new organelle. Once that new organelle has that message, it is very happy because now it's got it. It's got an understanding of what the message was supposed to be, what that message was all about. So that's the basic idea behind this system. The first part of the system that we'll go over in this video and the rest we'll go over in our subsequent videos is the plasma membrane. Notice how I mentioned that it include the plasma membrane. So let's talk about it very briefly. So the endomembrane system, we now understand its goal of compartmentalizing to promote intracellular communication, but now we can look at a specific component of it called the plasma membrane, also known as the cell membrane. The whole goal of the plasma membrane, and we probably understood this at this point, but just to reiterate, it encloses cell contents. It keeps the internal separate from the external. It encloses cell contents. I like to think of the plasma membrane, and I've mentioned this term before, as a gatekeeper. It's a very good gatekeeper because it is what's going to allow things to enter and exit. But there are specific ways that things enter and exit, and we can speak of them biologically. When the membrane pinches in, so we'll write membrane pinches inwards, when it sort of creates this pinch-like structure, it's going to allow things to enter. And then when the membrane allows for, let's say, um, a fusing with an interior vesicle, so when it fuses, let me write that over, when it fuses with interior vesicle, there obviously is a reason it's fusing, right? Why would it be fusing with something on the inside? It's fusing with on the, something on the inside because it wants it to exit. It wants it to leave. And that's what the plasma membrane is great at. It's great at gatekeeping, entering and exiting. In addition, you probably heard of this term before, the plasma membrane is semi-permeable. This goes into this idea that it allows what it wants to stay in and it allows what it wants to go out and vice versa. It's semi-permeable. Another way to say this is that it's selectively permeable. It chooses, picks and chooses what it wants to come in and what it wants to leave. So this is another component of the plasma membrane. One last thing I want to say and make sure we understand that it is not, absolutely not, a cell wall. A cell wall is a completely different structure. A cell wall, CW, is located outside the cell membrane. It's always located outside, let's say, the plasma membrane. And the cell wall is only in some specific cells. Only some cells have cell walls. Some bacteria, most plants, all plants actually have cell walls. But we have to understand that a cell wall is not a cell membrane, and the cell wall is also not, for that reason, part of the EMS. And what does the EMS stand for again? 
the endomembrane system. So this covers the introduction to our endomembrane system. We now understand what a membrane composed of, is composed of. It's simply a lipid bilayer to separate the specific compartments within it and that's once again one of the goals of this system to compartmentalize the cell into these organelles seen right over here and this overall goal is done so that we can communicate within the cell in this manner that we drew out here one of the main components of the endomembrane system is a plasma membrane plasma membrane the main thing I would definitely go away with is that it's semi permeable and selectively permeable understand what those two terms mean and it is certainly not a cell wall because a cell wall is located outside the plasma membrane and the cell wall is obviously not a part of the EMS for that reason